Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Run Level Zero. A year and a half ago, when I took my first look at Elementary OS Luna, I was absolutely just blown away with the innovation that I found there. It was and is to date the fastest OS or the fastest booting OS that I've ever used on hardware. Um, they just brought a lot of new stuff to the table. They have their own desktop environment called Pantheon. Um, and, and their implementation was just so beautiful and, and just elegant. It, it was a joy to use. I used it as my primary desktop for quite a while. Well, after 18 months of development, Elementary OS Freya is finally here. And I've run it this past weekend in a virtual box. I have not yet installed it on hardware, but it, it really lives up to my expectations. After 18 months of development, I can really respect that release cycle. You know, it's best to put out something that's ready, that's good, rather than just to throw something out there to appease the fans that isn't quite up to par. So, is it worth the wait? I would say absolutely yes. Let's take a look at some of the release notes. It says they have over 1,100 fixes, improvements, and new features. Uh, more discoverable, redesigned and app-focused multitasking view. New interactive, dismissible notifications. You're going to take a look at that uh, notification system in a moment. It's, it's great. So they re refined the look and feel. Better emoji support and drop-in replacements from Microsoft Core fonts for the web. They have a new firewall tool in privacy mode. Uh, much improved apps. Let's see. Updated software stack including Linux 3.16, GTK 3.14, and Vala 0.26. UEFI support. A new captive uh, por portal. A new captive portal assistant to uh, make connecting to public Wi-Fi easier and redesigned displays, user accounts, applications, date and time settings, and a unified login and lock, lock screen. So, let's pop over to it and take a look. Be right back. Welcome to Elementary OS Freya. Freya has a very lightweight, slim, clean interface. I really appreciate how they've put this together. Everything, it's, it just feels good, folks. It, it feels well thought out. And it is one of the more new user-friendly operating systems that I have used. It is based off of Ubuntu. Um, those of you coming over from Mac OS, you're going to feel right at home. Those of you coming over from Windows, it's, it's not much of a learning curve at all. It's, everything's laid out in a way that just makes sense. And so let's take a peek and see what you get. The application menu is in the upper left hand corner and it supports two modes. There's a traditional menu driven and there's one that's more icon centric. Now a lot of the uh, applications in here actually support context menu functions right in the menu. So if you say for instance right click on Midori you get options for a new tab, a new window, or a private browsing window. If you right click on files, you get a new tab, new window, open as administrator, that is that is handy, and you have an about menu. So you have a lot of functionality right here in the menu. The menu is searchable, so if I start typing Midori, you know, it's, it pops, pops back with results. And it also supports uh, some basic math functions. So if I just do 3 times 12, it gives you the answer right here. So I thought it was a pretty neat little plug-in. Let's take a look at our choices of uh, of applications here. Now, Freya takes a minimalistic approach to its to its default applications. They're going to give you the opportunity to build the system that you want. So I I, I do respect that approach. So that's the applications you do get for accessories, you have an archive manager, calculator, uh, scratch pad. Let's open that up. We'll use that here in just a minute. You see I have something preloaded here for us, a command. We'll use that in just a minute. Uh, coming back, you have a screenshot utility and the terminal. Freya's terminal has, has lots of new features added. 
Uh, one of them is a security feature. It has smart tab names and that sort of stuff. But if you copy a sudo command and try to paste it into the terminal, you'll get a warning pop-up saying that this command is asking for administrative access to your computer. So I think that's a pretty cool safety feature. You can choose to paste anyway or don't paste. All right. So we'll get that running and let that go for a moment because I want to show you the, the new notification system here. Let's get back in there while this is running. So we have terminals. Let's see. Going down to graphics, we have a photo uh, utility as well as a simple scan utility. For internet, you have Gary Mail, and Midori is the web browser of choice. Excellent lightweight browser. For Office, you have Calculator, Calendar, and a PDF viewer. Again, it is a minimalistic approach, so you don't have an Office suite. You can install one if you need it. For Other, you have your multitasking view, which that, that was one of the strong features of, uh, of Luna, and it's, it's not a unique feature. There are other there are other desktops like Cinnamon and, and Gnome that have a multitasking view. But this is Luna's Pantheon desktop and they did include it. And I don't know, it it's really cool. It it just works. You can add desktops. You can drag and drop applications between desktops. So and you can actually uh, snap two applications if you want. You can close stuff. You know, it's, it, it works. It works really well. It's very lightweight. All right. So let's go down back down to applications. Under sound and video, uh, we have camera utility, music utility, and a, a uh, video player. And from what I understand, uh, the music utility and video utility and the camera utility were all developed by and for elementary OS. Under System Tools, you have your File Browser, which I believe is Nautilus. You have the Ubuntu Software Center, your Software Updater, and your System Settings. Now, I did have uh, some questions uh, from Nirad. Uh, asked me specifically about the Software Center and Update Manager in, uh, in Freya. So the Software Center is the Ubuntu Software Center. For most of us, this is the first Software Center that we've ever used. I, I like the Ubuntu Software Center. It's not uh, the fastest one out there, but it is very user-friendly. It does have categorized applications, and it is fully searchable. So you're going to be able to find your, your, your file browsers, your uh, office suites relatively easy and be able to install them with no problems. As far as updates go, Again, it uses the Ubuntu uh, software updater. It's fired up. It's going to check for updates. There shouldn't be any because I just updated this system. Okay. There we go. And now we can get into our settings. All right. For settings, uh, you, can, you really have a pretty... Uh, fine degree of control over how your how your updates are handled on this system. Uh, you can tell it to check for updates. I have mine set to daily, and when there are security updates, I tell it to download and install the security updates automatically. Or you can just tell it to hey display it. Let me know that they're there. I tell it to go ahead and download and install. And when there are other updates, you can tell it to hey go ahead and this is going to be for your non-security related. Say there's a a new version of Firefox or Chrome or something out there. I have mine set to display immediately, but you can say, hey, display it every week or two weeks. So, yeah, you have you do have a fine degree of control over uh, how software is handled on your system. All right. So, yeah, that's it for the, uh, the installed applications. Like I said, they, they do take a fairly minimalistic approach. All right, so moving along the taskbar up here, you have access to your calendar and clock. And in the upper right-hand corner, you have your volume control, network manager, your battery monitor, and your, your uh, session settings. You can get a shortcut to the system settings, lock screen. You can change users, uh, log out, suspend, or shut down, reboot from here. 
Along the bottom, we have our task bar or quick launch bar. You have quick access to that multitasking view, which is, which is a step up over Luna. Uh, Freya has made it much easier to get into that multitasking view. You have a quick launch for Midori, your web browser, for Geary Mail, your calendar, your music and videos, your photos, again your system settings, your software center, and your terminal. All right, let's get down into the control panel. Because the control panel has, it, it does have some pretty cool features. Uh, for the desktop settings, it comes stocked with a nice choice of beautiful wallpaper. You have settings for the dock. You can change the icon size and its behavior. Right now it's set to hide when focus window is maximized. So if I maximize this window, it'll auto hide the dock. But tapping the bottom of the screen will bring the dock back. You also have a control for your hot corners. So you can set the corners to do whatever you would like. So if somebody touches, say, this corner, let's have it snap out into the multitasking view. So now if I come down and touch this, oops, that was actually my, <laughs> I forgot I had set that corner for my host system to also snap out to display desktop. My host system just overrode, uh, just overrode my, my uh, virtual box there. But if you were running this on hardware, you touch down there, it's, it's going to go to multitasking view. All right, so let's go back to all settings. For notifications, this is pretty cool. Um, the the uh, elementary OS Freya incorporates some great notifications. Uh, you get bubbles and a sound. Let's say if, when I run the app, the app get update. Uh, as soon I'm not going to run it again, but as soon as it finishes, you'll get a, a, a notification bubble here saying, "Hey, that that command has finished in the terminal." Or you know, anytime there's a system notification, it'll appear as a notification in the upper right hand corner. Well, you have the option here of turning those on or off. I mean, it's, it's a great integration, a nice system to have. But if you don't want to be bothered, you can turn, you know, if you want just a sound to play or just a bubble. You also have a global do not disturb sign. All right, so that's, that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go back and take a look at security and privacy. As we all know, uh, most of our systems, even in Windows and, and, and elsewhere, you know, Part, most of our applications will keep will keep lists and histories. For example, uh, your office suite may keep a list of, of recently opened documents. Well, you, you have an option of having a pretty fine level of control of turning on or off those histories. You also have a global privacy mode that will prevent any histories being stored by any applications. So yeah, that's pretty cool. You also have a button to clear clear out any current usage data. You have a lock control to, to control what happens when your uh, system locks up. And also, firewall. Let's unlock this. You have an integrated firewall utility. So you can come in and add rules uh, for your firewall. All right, so that's, that's pretty neat. Already, in, already integrated as part of your system. So yeah, I have really enjoyed elementary OS Freya. It's clean, it's minimalistic you know, at, at install at its approach, but there's just a lot of features. This is one of those OS's that you can just explore in for days and not see all the little nuances that are in there. Uh, 18 months in the making and it shows. I would absolutely recommend this to new, intermediate, and advanced users to Linux alike. I, I don't think you'll be disappointed with Freya. Uh, in, in my opinion, it, it was definitely well worth the wait. Download it. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. Uh, leave your questions and comments down in the, in the uh, comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Thank you for being with me today, and I hope to be with you soon for another video.